and welcome <laughs> to my channel. Uh, my name is Sofia and I'm from Sweden and I work as a model in South Korea. And this is... Ida and I am also from Sweden and I used to work as a model in South Korea. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> We've known each other for many many years and you moved to South Korea and started working as a model. And then I moved after you and also started working as a model. Yeah, you took my life. I took your life. <laughs> Not literally unalived her, but hmm. I kidnapped her life. I might be a ghost, look at me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we were talking about a little bit like how we got into modeling and how we moved to Korea and... Like our journey from our journey. Sweden to modeling in Korea. <laughs> yes. Because I'm working on a little series of things that is good to know before you're moving to Korea working as a model. Um, just because I think it's things you should know to save yourself a lot of pain. Um, and just to be able to, you know, take care of yourself. Yeah. Survive. Survive. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Korea Survival 101. I learned a lot from Ida because she started modeling before me. I didn't really think I was going to do that, but here we are. So yeah. I learned a lot from her and now I want to share my knowledge with you guys. And I thought, why not make this video with Ida? <laughs> yeah! You probably don't know. Uh, I am older than her, two years older. So that's why our timelines were kind of not the same because we were at different stages of our lives. Yeah. So I came to Korea in 2014, I think. I went there to study, so I came on a study visa. And I studied Korean for a year. While I was studying, I did work at a pub. Uh, this is relevant later, I promise. <laughs> uh, but just like Alba, like doing, you know, something to get money. And then I was um, discovered uh, by an agent. And I don't know what the rules are now. I don't know what they were back then, honestly. Um, but I did do some like entertainment work with permission from my school. I did do a few drama shoots, maybe two or three, and then I did a movie shoot. So that's like kind of where I I realized that, oh, I might be able to do this because this is very fun. I had never done anything like it before. So I was like, well, maybe I should do this again. So I went back to Sweden and then I came back on a working holiday. Note, on a working holiday, you cannot do entertainment work. No, you cannot. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you cannot. Since I had worked at this pub while studying, I knew them, they knew me, they liked me a lot, so I came back on a working holiday and started working there. And while working at the pub, I started building my portfolio, I did some collaboration shoots with people, which means yeah, I don't get paid, they don't get paid, it's just me and a photographer, sometimes also makeup artists might be in the mix, and you shoot together and everyone gets photos for their own portfolios. So I started doing that, like creating a network of photographers mostly that I knew. Yeah, just like networking, building my portfolio, gaining some experience from doing that. Uh, but yeah, anyways, so I was in Korea working at a pub, doing some collaboration shoots, getting my network broadened, and then eventually I found an agent, an agency actually, <laughs> that were willing to sponsor my visa and sign me. Did not work because okay. making an E6 at least back then was very complicated. Yeah, um, I think it still is, but <laughs> it's complicated in different ways now, yeah, I think. Back I think then so. no one knew what to do, so they yeah. had to like guess and send in the paperwork and they're like, it's wrong. Try again. It's wrong. We failed, so I actually, when I left my working holiday, I came back on a C4, which is a short-term working visa. For entertainment work. Since I was signed by a Korean agency, I could work with them on the C4, so that's when I like really started working, working, working. But that means you have to leave the country and then come back, like, yeah, apply for a new visa. Yeah, it's only visa. I think I only had one C4. I might have had two. I was on a C4 for sometime until we eventually got it right and I got my E6. That's a one-year visa. So I came back and I was like full-time working as a model slash entertainer. Yeah, so I did a lot. Yeah, <laughs> like, I did. mostly did videos, but I also did like lookbooks. I did a feel like campaign. That was really cool though. I love that one. Yeah. But yeah, I did a lot of commercials. I did a lot of music videos, drama, did a couple of movies. 
<laughs> general things like that because I have a pretty commercial look I wanted to do like runway and high fashion but I am short I'm 167 centimeters but it was fun yeah I, I survived didn't you get did. rich <laughs> and I first came on a tourist visa to visit Ida for two months uh, to just have fun and I was really into photography at that time so yeah. I was like let's take photos yeah so Ida is actually the one who forced me to be in front of the camera <laughs> uh, let's switch oh I shoot gosh, you I have so many bad photos from the first year like because I'm so uncomfortable I'm like oh, I don't know what to do like I really mm. don't know what to do in front of the camera I don't like it I'm I want to be behind the camera. I remember you told me you need to like learn how it is in front of the camera so you can help me when you're behind the camera. <laughs> and that's something that stuck with me. And I, to this day when I'm shooting, I'm always visualizing as a model kind of how the photo would turn out. Yeah, what like, does the I camera see? so much from that. I liked Korea and I was like, you know what? I want to come back on a working holiday. Yeah, let's I mean, just have fun same, for a same year, story. You know? Working holiday. Yeah, let's have fun for a year. So I came back and I worked in like with a lot of different things and I worked in a bar as well and I also did like a lot of photo shoots on the side as a photographer but I also started getting contacted to have my photos taken by photographers and I decided you Again, as what? collaborations. As collaborations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like photographers that had taken photos of Ida contacted me and I was like, yeah. why? Because we would... I would tag her in my photos and they followed me and then they'd be like, hey, another yeah, girl. Yeah. Another girl with red hair, something yeah. different, you know. I was talking to a mutual friend uh, about wanting to stay longer in Korea and like thinking maybe I should give it a chance to try modeling. I was mm -hmm. not really convinced first. It took me a long time to convince myself to do it. But I talked to it a lot and then I decided, okay, let's just like start building a portfolio. So I started contacting photographers a lot and just took a lot of photos, like looked around for like a lot of agencies mm -hmm. and I don't know, I have a lot of like anxiety when it comes to making <laughs> huge decisions, which I think sometimes is to my advantage. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but it took me so long to find an agency to sign with because I was just, mm, I'm mm -hmm. not sure if this is the right one for me. Like I really weighed all my options. So in the end, my visa ran out and I had to come back as a tourist to see if I could find an agency to sign <laughs> with which was kind of stressful because you know your money is running out when you're a tourist because you're not allowed to work and I was mm. like I need to find one soon and a friend of mine recommended me to her agency and I signed with them and I'm so happy I did but it cost me a lot of money to just go back and forth to Sweden <laughs> but I do think it was worth it mm. because in the end I felt happy with my choice and now, now we're here. It's been four years since I moved there. I was gonna be there for one and now it's been four. I worked with, like we kind of worked with quite different things, I think. Yes, we have very different looks. I was typecasted a lot as the Barbie, which meant I got blue eyeshadow, pink lips, and I was supposed to be like, ah. and I hate that. <laughs> oh my God, it's so far from yeah. me. Ooh, it's like top level acting on my part to even pretend to be like cute. Yeah. Oh, like I said, I was cast as a mom. I was cast as, yeah, like the girlfriend type a lot where it's like, you know, like when it's like, I'm a cute girl. And I'm like, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> Am I though? Yeah. Um, I think that's why I got to do a lot of music videos because I'm short. And then the K-pop boys look slightly taller because they're like this much taller than me. Yeah, mm. I, I've done a lot of commercials for like electronics and cars and yeah. stuff. Like also that's kind of lifestyle because they do want people to look not like top models. That's the yeah. thing because people that are buying the products, they want them to be able to relate. Mm. Um, and since I do have a different hair color, I used to have pretty short hair. Um, I'll show some pictures here somewhere there here she uh, is. which I think made me stand out pretty well I guess mm. like I got a lot of castings for that because if they wanted that it was only me but I was also casted for a lot of lookbooks either like street style unisex but mm. they would also make me very cute in a lot of stuff and now I'm about to turn 27 but 20, when I was 26 I was like I'm tired of being cute <laughs> you know like 
you know, you come to a point where it's like, it feels weird to be called cute all the time because I'm an adult, you know? So mm -hmm. I kind of tried to change my style a little bit and see what kind of clientele I would get from that. But yeah. a lot of commercial, not mm -hmm. as many music videos as I would love to, but a lot of drama, <laughs> extra, like walking in the background, you know, blurry little red dots in the background. Great, you know? Yeah. Be I mean, to be fair, I was younger, like, because I started younger than you started. Oh, yeah. Like, I was never, I never really got to do, like, sex which I'm fine with. I'm fine with not doing like feminine coded sexy, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's not really my thing, but I would have loved to do more like street style and like first lookbook was for like a street fashion brand. Mm. And I loved it. I loved it so much. These are the photos. <laughs> Here they are. <laughs> but that was back when I had my full white hair. It was like an edgier look, but like the upkeep was too much. So that's yeah. why I went back to more like natural hair. And then I was cast as a mom, a mom. <laughs> at 23. Yeah. <laughs> I was the mom of an eight-year-old child way too many times. <laughs> no, because it's like you never know what kind of clients you're gonna have and what they like about you. I didn't think I was gonna do any like skincare, which I got to do, which I was very mm -hmm. happy about. I was like, I didn't think I was gonna be what they looked for, but I guess it was for the international market once again. Mm. So for that, they need more diversity. Yeah, and you have kind of a unique look. So if they're doing like the the classic one black girl, one Asian girl, and two white girls, yeah, then I'm one of the white girls. Yeah, you cool. would be the other one, <laughs> basically. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy because I've got to do a lot of different type of shoots, but it's also like it's ups and downs, you know. Pros and cons. I mean, with my hairstyle, I was very unique. I couldn't be casted for a lot of things. I had people ask me, this was in the industry, it's like, oh, you do so many like interesting jobs. Like, you know, I wish I could do those jobs. And I'm like, yeah, but you have like, a different look. You will be able to do bridals mm -hmm. that you make a lot of money from that. Like, I cannot. Like, I don't suit that style. Mm -hmm. um, I've also been to some underwear, like sports underwear castings. Which I would love to do, because it's like, I also don't like doing sexy, but I do think sports is more up my fun, alley. Yeah. yeah, but I do have too much curves. So the like sample size for sports bra oh, bras are like 75B, and I am way bigger than that, because... Well, you're smaller and bigger. That's yeah, the thing. <laughs> so my, my size is like, it just doesn't work. Which is like sad, but I just have to accept it. Like, they're not gonna cast me. Pros and cons, having a very specific look, because then you might not get casted for everything, but the things they want you for, they mm. might not have any other person in mind, you know? You're like, you don't have any competition. Pros yeah, and cons. I mean, if I give an example off of top mm. of my mind, I have a friend, he's not in Korea anymore, but when he was, he had a beard. Not a lot of guys in Korea have beards. Yeah. He got so much work. Because I had like a full beard and tattoos. A lot of street style, a lot of like commercials. Yeah, and right. he did a lot of really high-end brands because yeah. again, a very specific look. So eh, it depends on what you look yeah, like. Yeah, it depends on... I mean, it's the same like with my agency. They can't maybe cast me for a lot of things. They might send my profile to the clients, but the client might not want me. Hmm. Even if they send my profile, they are not the one deciding. Yeah. And a lot of the jobs they can offer, I know I'm not what the, the <laughs> client looks for, which is okay, you know, mm. it's totally fine. It's not their fault. If you go to a casting and in the end they don't pick you, it's like, yeah. well, it's okay, because... Don't take it personally. No, it's not it's personal. Just... It's just about how things look and like, together. It could even be that they love you, but they also love this male model and this other ma like female model that looks also really nice, that they really like. They look way better together, height-wise, size-wise, yeah. color-wise, anything. Like, they might just have a better chemistry or something. Yeah, or let's say all of their clothes are uh, hot pink and your hair would clash. Exactly, it could be that. <laughs> and my, even my undertones might not work. Or yeah. It's just my body type might not look good next to the male model. It's not personal. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. But of course it can be hard to take a no. And like, sometimes they can be pretty... Harsh. Yeah, they'll tell you if they think you're fat. Even if you're not, they'll be like, yeah, I'm sorry, you're too fat. <laughs> yeah, and people I, will tell you to lose weight. Yeah, I had one instance where there was this male agent and he saw my comp card. He was like, yeah, that's that's too much for your height. You should probably be this much. And he said like three or four kilograms less. So I just waited a week 
edited my comp card to say the weight he said. Mm. And then I sent it back to him and he was like, much better. And I'm like, and then he, he, he chose me. Yeah. I looked the exact same because did I lose the weight? No, I didn't. He just liked the f- the numbers the on numbers. the paper better. Yeah. Which is like really stupid. I've, I've been told that too when I've been looking to sign with agencies mm-hmm. and it could be like, oh yeah, but you know, if you could be this or this much skinnier, that would be great. And I'm like, I couldn't. <laughs> I, I can't. This is how I'm built. Like, I mean, there is like always a job for it. Like, it, everyone. So, yeah. if they need someone that skinny, they will find someone that's skinny that's naturally that skinny. I'm not that person, so I can find other jobs. Yeah. Um, but it might take some time to get established in the industry. For me, yeah. I mean, I've been there, I built portfolio, I had a lot, and I had friends in the industry, even mm. though I, I did I did most on my own. Like, I got help from my friends, mm. you know. But I mean, it, I left you. I was like, yeah, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Bye-bye. I'm leaving. But I still, still ask you a lot of questions about yeah. stuff that I was trying, trying to figure out, but... I mean, it's just, it takes time. It took me a long time. I mean, the first couple of, like, four or five months, I struggled. I really struggled. It was hard. It was Mm -hmm. really difficult in the beginning. The end. (laughs) Yeah, the end. Subscribe. Subscribe. And if you want to be a model in Korea, um, do. Good luck. (laughs) Yeah, good luck. But, I mean, if you want to, you should. But please take care of yourself first. Make sure you're prepared. And I don't want you guys to end up in a bad position um yeah. yeah you can make it just come prepared know know what you're aiming for um and if you have visible tattoos or piercings just know that that might decide for you what you yeah. are able to do or if you have very specific hair color like you would think this is not very specific but it is in korea it is so it's mm-hmm. like you have different options but yeah just be prepared don't do something stupid And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. And uh, thank you for watching. (laughs) Bye! Bye!